now the academic procession of the distinguished academic of this great university and the principal officers will commence in the next few minutes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Now the academic procession is already coming into the hall. Leading the procession is the dean, the acting dean of student affairs, Dr. Maru Oladimeji. Dr. Oladimeji is followed by the acting dean, faculty of environmental studies, Doctor Abayomi, Abayomi Layeni. Doctor Abayomi Layeni is followed by the Dean Faculty of Agricultural Production and Renewable Resources, Professor Akim Awujobi. Is followed by the Dean Faculty of Agricultural Management and Rural Development. Professor Deron Awotide. Professor Awotide is followed by the distinguished Dean Faculty of Arts, Professor Samson Dari. Professor Dari is followed by the Dean Faculty of Pharmacy, Professor Latif Saka Kasim. It's closely followed by the Dean Faculty of Clinical Sciences, Professor Mrs. M.B. Petruga. Professor Petruga is followed by the Dean Faculty of Science, Professor Lawrence Adebayo. Professor Adebayo is closely followed by the Acting Dean Faculty of Law, Dr. Bade Akiri Made. Dr. Akiri Made is followed by the Dean Faculty of Education. Educational policy. How do we, how do we? Professor Olufemi Kalesonwo. Of course, Professor Kalesonwo is the Dean Faculty of Education. It's, follow, it's closely followed by the Dean Faculty of Administration and Management Sciences, Professor Arosi Shomoye. It's closely followed by the Acting Provost College of Engineering and Environmental Studies, Dr. Bashir Odufuwa. It's followed by the Provost College of Agricultural Sciences, Professor Adewale Onosonya. Professor Onosonya is followed by the Provost of Afemi Aulo College of Health Sciences, Professor A.O. Olatunji. He is closely followed by the Provost School of Graduate Studies, Professor Olushegun Adibayo Lawal. Next to Professor Lawal is the Professor of this great university, Mr. Semiu Adeniyi Makinde, FCA. Next to the university boss is the university librarian, Dr. Adebambo Adewale Otuwale. Next to him is the secretary to council and of course the registrar of this great university, Mr. Femi Ogunwo Moju. Mr. Femi Ogunwo Moju is followed by the deputy vice chancellor of administration, Professor Charles Olufemi Adekoya. Next to him is the, uh, the deputy vice chancellor of academic, Professor Ola Tundu Abosede Oderinde. And of course, the inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Shefiu Ayonfe Oluwa Yomi Ola Dijoye. He's been honored by our own Vice Chancellor, Professor Ayodiji Agwola. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Let's have our seat, please.
Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor, the distinguished members of the audience. I have the pleasure in now inviting the Registrar and Secretary to Council of this great university, Mr. Femi Ogunwomuju, who in turn we invite the Vice Chancellor of this great university, Professor Ayodiji Agwola, to deliver the 107 Professor Inaugural Lecture. Open. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I please invite the Vice Chancellor to declare this 107th inaugural lecture open. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Principal officers of the university, provosts, deans, heads of department, present, professors, members of senate, our inaugural lecturer of today and his family, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of senate of this university, I hereby declare one of the servants inaugural lecture of this great university, Hope. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this 107th inaugural lecture is titled Literature of Teaching and Teacher of Literacy, the 21st Century Challenge. It will be delivered by Professor Sefiu Oluwa Yomi Ola Dunjoye. May I now invite the Vice Chancellor to please introduce the inaugural lecturer, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Professor Sefiu Ayonfe Oluwa Yomi. Oladu Joye, who was born on 9th of November, 1960. He began his teaching career in 1988 after graduating with BA in English language in the top 10 of his highly competitive sites at the then Oguste University, now Olabisi Olabajo University at Galway. He taught in Muslim high school at Galway between the year 1988 and 1993, during which he enrolled for master's degree in language education of the University of Ibadan, which he was awarded in the year 1991. This afforded him the opportunity of taking up a lecturer two appointment in the Ogu State College of Education in Jagu in Jebo Ode, where he had been a student between 1981 and 1984. He taught in the college from 1993 up to the year 1998 and had the opportunity to transfer his service to the university in July 1998. In January 2005, the inaugural professor of today obtained a doctoral degree of the University of Ibadan in his choice field of TESO, leadership, which is teaching English, English to speakers of other languages, including my own language. Starting from Lecture 2, Oluwa Yomi Oladugui rose through the ranks to the peak of his academic career by becoming the second professor of language education in this great university. From the department to the faculty to university level, Professor Oladu Joye has functioned in different areas of administration. He was the faculty elected representative of the Board of Teaching Practice Committee 
between the year 1999 to 2002, Secretary, Faculty Open Lecture Committee, 2001 to 2003, Faculty Representative at Osu Staff School Management Board between the year 1999 to 2002, Member Faculty Meritorious Award Committee, 2002 to 2004, Member Committee on National Conference, 2004 to 2005, Representative of the Dean of Education on the Board of Faculty of Arts between the year 2010 to 2016, Member Departmental Finance Committee, as well as Chairman Departmental Affiliation Committee for the Defunct Curriculum Studies and Instructional Technology Department. He currently serves as the head of the part, as the head of part-time students between February to July 2016, acting director of the Center for Continuing Education 2016 to 2018, Dean Students Affairs 2018 to 2020, and currently the head department of arts and social sciences education, known as ASSE, of this great university where he has been performing a very wonderful mentorship in teaching and research. In the last 24 years of his career as a teacher of English as a second language, Professor Ladoulier has created a niche for himself as an award-winning trainer, novelist, biographer, and keen researcher. His intellectual frame His international fame began with his win of the Northridge Institute of Language Education Scholarship tag from teacher to trainer in the year 2008. The scholarship was a complete package that took him beyond the shores of Nigeria to the Norfolk region of the United Kingdom as the only African and the only recipient of the nice scholarship for a short-term course among 17 participants. In addition to all this, he has published novelist and biographer with over 35 journal articles in national and international journals of their book, including editing and contributing chapters in books. It's popular with systematic English for schools, colleges, and universities that was first published in 2005 and reprinted severally after. It's also the author of Nove, Done in the Valley, published in 2008. This distinguished academic has served as many of times as excellent examiner for the following institutions, namely Department of Art and Social Sciences Education, University of Ibadan. Institute of Education, Obafem Awolowo University, Ilefe, Bakok University, Ilefe, and all and all like that. He's a key moderator and management member of e EL, a mega online English language platform that practices the English language 24-7, including preparing students across the world for varieties of international exams like TOEFL, ILS, GRE, IG, CSE, etc. Since the end of last year, 2022, the Nangra Lecturer has been in partnership with Transform LH, which is a UK-based organization seeking to improve the use of English in Africa. Professor Ladi is a strong member of national and international professional bodies and this includes, one, Registration Council of Nigeria, Curriculum Organization of Nigeria, National Association of Educators for National Development, Reading Association of Nigeria, British Association of Lecturers of English for Academic Purpose, International Association of Teachers of English as Foreign Language, Center for Applied Linguistics, Washington DC, USA, and the European Center for Research, Training, and Development in UK, among others. I 
Our inaugural lecturer of today is a combination of God's matchless grace and uncommon rigor of academics with a patient for success that speaks for itself. He's a strong advocate of equality and equal rights, irrespective of culture, social, and religious or orientation. Professor Raduye is a performer driven team players with salesmanship and pastoral skills. He's happily married to his wife, Mrs. Opeyemi O. Oladujoe, and this union is actually blessed with children. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Sefio Oladujoe to the podium. The only I offer of a lady to marry. The Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics. Deputy Vice Chancellor Admin, Registrar and other Principal Officers of the University, Provost of Colleges, Dean of Education, Dean of Faculties and Dean of Student Affairs, Distinguished Colleagues and Friends from Sister Universities, Your Excellencies and Real Highnesses present, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, Gentlemen of the Press, Great Holy Whites, <laughs> Ladies and Gentlemen, Preamble. The thought of presenting the 107th inaugural lecture for Abyss of Major University OOU to a mammoth crowd of friends, families, and well wishers truths the art for a man like the Babilika Jabez that I am, with hopeless sick background and a poor psychosocial foundation. I'm full of gratitude to my creator and redeemer that raised me from the donkey to sit among the princes. I consider myself the most unworthy, unworthy person to come near professing on the high share of excellence that this tradition represents in the academic world. Nevertheless, it is happening right now. This is the Lord's doing, and to him be glory. I appreciate the leadership of the university for this unique privilege. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. The vogue is that inaugural lecturers, as expected, should present a record that showcases them as number one in their pilgrimage of the academic ladder. I wish that I could do the same. While writing the introductory notes, I was enthused with sarcasm as I consider myself an anticlimax, having no number one position to claim. For instance, I'm the number five in my family, the last born in my, of my mother. I'm the second head of part-time studies from the Faculty of Education. They taught to present an inaugural lecture in the House of Ancestral Sciences Education. Number two, to be the director of Center for Continuing Education. Number three, Dean Student Affairs from the Faculty of Education. And number three, head of part time, uh, number three, head of asset, Department of Asset. The spectacle is intriguing. Five, two, three, two, three, three. It does look like one of the failed Nigerian systems of education, doesn't it? However, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I see something bigger than number in my story. I believe strongly in providence, and I can humbly say from the outset that my life is a testimony. My career is preordained by heavens. I choose to narrate three certain incidents today. Here is the first one. In our primary school days, we were on errands for our parents and the adults in our locality. I was always sent to Grand Pepper in Baba Ibrahim's place. He rented shop in Elijah in this village, Igon Road, about five houses from ours. By divine arrangement, which is still strange to me till today, I met Baba Ibrahim with whom I had lost contact for four decades. But I was surprised that he could still recognize me. That was about eight years ago when I ran onto him before his demise at the age of 80. He greeted me with the appellation, Okunelonyi Boyanre. This is the English speaking man. He reminded me that whenever I brought pepper to grind them, I would be entertaining them with my primary school bombastic rhetorics. I was struck as the image flashed back to me. Instantly, I recall that I indeed talked with the audacity of a war smith that was hardly better than that of the vocalization of Grigori, the popular character in the TV soap opera of the 1980s, Captain Village Headmaster. My amazement was predicated on the fact that this friendly kind old man did not know that I'm a teacher of the teaching of English as a second language, as we talked. I opened my mouth in bewilderment. 
The second instance is this. Traditionally, most Yoruba wives address boys and guys, especially those whose birth preceded their marriage into the family with appellation in deference to culture. As a teenager, my elder brother's wife called me master and called my middle brother doctor. In my days and with more than three background, I had two options for further studies, technical college and teacher training college. I had visited my middle elder brother, Egbom Yekini, not Professor Gutima, colleagues in faculty of education, we understand, who was already in government trade center, Ijebode, and I was keenly in love with his hostel and inwardly desired to join him. This was not to be, for I wanted to experience the reality of the real aspects, real respect with which teachers were accorded then to also come to pass in my life. Thus, when my elder brother asked me to choose, I opted for a teacher in college instead of a trade center. Why? I too wish to be addressed master. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I present my number three incident. I belong to the last batch of NC holders to participate in the National Youth Service Corps. That was in 1984. I was therefore admitted to the university in 1985 as the entry student. Taking advantage of my nativity, I started an English lesson in the town and soon became popular across the entire local government area while simultaneously taking on a part-time PTA job in Musiba High School. So I graduated in 1988. I was set to leave Agorwe for good, having been an aunt for a long time. Consequently, I paid a private visit to the Teaching Service Commission, Tesco, Abeokuta, in the company of a father figure, Elijah Rashidi Oshilaja, a.k.a. Wole Wole, of the Blessed Memory, to arrange that I should be posted to Shagamu Abeokuta, but never Agorwe. The arrangement was perfected, and I came back very happy, hoping to leave Agorwe finally in a matter of days. I was asked to come for my letter the following Monday. However, it never occurred to me that I could be monitored for a powerful delegation of Muslim community had gone to Tesco, Abelkota, overriding my private visit. They went in the Central Mosque bus to underscore the importance of their visit. The team requested for my automatic posting to their school. The Tesco obliged the Muslim community representatives, and I was handed a appointment letter as the first graduate teacher of English in Muslim High School at Galway. I was too young and energetic to care about my blood pressure as the turn of events certainly brought me a shock. Case closed, for there was nothing I could do. In sum, Oyimbo speaking as a boy, the shots of teacher training to answer master for the reality of it, and my exploits in the teaching of English from those formative stages of my career have all culminated in my standing here this afternoon as a professor of language education with specialism in English as a second language. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I have spent a great part of my career life engaging in the lexus between language content and pedagogy and fixing the new style of language while promoting literacy as a means of earning a better life and advancing a great community. The teacher and trainer of teachers in me that I stand here to represent before this April audience have the dual role of learning the English language and teaching it to students who will in turn go and teach other students to profit from it. Language teachers are the most privileged professionals in the world. All other professionals, vocations, disciplines, jobs, and businesses need us to operate that they may flourish. You ask why? The answer is that all transactions, analog, digital, human, material, remote, and immediate need communication, the other side of languages. The choice of the title, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the choice by the inaugural lecture of the title, Literature of Teaching and Teacher of Literacy, the 21st Century Challenge, is a clarion call to accountability from a professing steward of best practice in applied linguistics. My journey through all phases of education that ever existed in the country, while embracing the opportunity to also teach, have given me the ample chance of having more than a round look at literacy in Nigeria, then and now. I was not only educated in the <laughs> university, the college Chagamu, but also taught in the teacher training college, government teachers college, you took Bobo State. I did not only attend the college of education, we say college of education in Jebo Day, but also returned to lecture in the same college for solid five years, that is, many years after leaving the college as a student. With first degree, master's and PhD in education, and English language as my teaching subject, I want to humbly as submit that I was both an experimental guinea pig of the educational system of my generation and a proud product of a successful experiment. A successful experiment because my generation and I represent what true literacy is all about. I will speak more about this shortly. Initial introduction about language and communication. Talking about language is the prerogative of a language educator. 
We learn language, we teach language, we write language, we generate theories as well as evolve frameworks for language. We read it, we apply it to bring life to forcing communities of homo sapiens. Communication involves audience and formal and informal discourses are interactive. We are the speaker or writer can turn to audience or receiver, vice versa. At this, um, language education identify with the author of the beginning that spoke life unto the empty atmosphere, the almighty God, Jehovah Shaddai, that, uh, that, that, the, the I am that I am. The first audience of God was the atmospheric space, void of any living creatures, to which he spoke the word of authority. Thus, the first user of language is God, the creator of the heaven and the earth. He brought instant life into space. When God commanded in Genesis 1.28, that man should be fruitful and multiply. He should replenish the earth and subdue it. It was a machine order to engage in meaningful, productive living via language. It's like initiating a press conference. It's an encouragement to fellowship, relationship, and living that goes beyond the existence. Language is closely related to the mind. It is the means by which we conceptualize and think. It is a representational system that belongs to both human and the culture. Bill Stock, 1991, all the 2009. Language brings life, love, and light to families, fellowships, fraternities, friendships, formations, and frontliners are made famous because they are not famished by failures of fosters and firefighters who are forecasters of fruitlessness and fault finding. Language is a medium of expressing all subjects. The unagreed position of language persists the centrality of communication in literacy. I go to literacy and development. Literacy midwives progress, Mr. Vice Chancellor. No wonder what we call international world today are actually nations that anchor development. Literacy it midwives progress. No wonder what we call international world today are actually nations that anchor development. Such inventions and discoveries that emerge from their robust exposure to education the technology that produced the allowed driverless trains and underground tubes in the United Kingdom, for instance, and electric signals that propel metro lines in the United States and Canada are not only products of communication, but are also function by communication. Electric wires and insulated rain communicate signals to trains on different lines to ensure the safety of the passengers and the crews. As powers in phonetics speak through answering machines, to passengers who must listen well to hear instruction relating to their trips to ensure safe journey. In well-coordinated traffic lights, in diverse colors, communicates various signals ranging from stop, move, bend, ahead, men at work, several crossing, weight, and the likes. Furthermore, the safety rules that came to fly passengers in national and international travels are delivered in expressions that carry mutual intelligibility for all on board. So whether racing a home, doing business, being in motion, undergoing a course of spending leisure, language is involved, no wonder. Nelson Mandela's popular quotation, 1918 to 2023, 2013, 2013, sorry, captures it all. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart. Education, language, and development. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Formal education is not negotiable in human development, and we in humanities set the construct to, inter to interface various aspects of technology and science through the template of language. English is the official language of Nigeria, for instance, and it remains the yardstick for measuring literacy in our country. Federal government, it is, um, and uh, 2004. The English language technically has filled a place of a lingua franca in Nigeria, like it is in many Commonwealth nations struggling to advance a common language of communication. Though, linguistically, it is simply an official language. Olado J, 2008, 2012, 2014, Nigeria. It says Nigeria has been debris with the challenge of foreign or lingua franca from existing languages, dialects and idioms that researchers have variously put our languages in Nigeria at 250, 300, and 700 varieties at different points. Olado in 2005 had earlier taken a look at the complexity in the choice of lingua franca for the country and its analysis of Ebo Backways article in the Daily Champion of January 21, 2005. According to the report, the number of languages listed for Nigeria is 15. Now of these languages, 505 are living languages, two are second language without mother tongue speakers, and eight are extinct. 
language education. As a young intellectual, Mr. First Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I had difficulty understanding the concept of language education and why my postgraduate certificates have to read language education and not English education. I soon discovered that specialists in language education with biases in English, Yoruba, French, Igbo, Hausa, German, Arabic, Spanish, and so on, actually are experts in literacy. All languages have the same skills to either acquire, as in listening and speaking, or learn, as in reading and writing. This is the fulcrum upon which the wheels of communication roll. A baby is born to naturally listen, imitate, and follow what the older siblings do without formal tutoring, except there's a case of maladjustment or any form of physiological misnomer. Language development is a complementary task to the physical growth of coding and working. The message is that the twin skills of oracy, listening and speaking, are not taught. They are not essentially skills of literacy. They are skills that grow with children. On the other hand, reading and writing are skills of literacy. They must be taught. Literacy, education, and my generation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Let me at this juncture submit that I am using literacy in this presentation as education, and education as literacy, for so they are. Education provides the literate template for planning, researching, and executing developmental, developmental goals and objectives. Through education, visions, visions are generated for all areas of national needs, economy, politics, commerce, human management, school system, manufacturing, religion, and so on. According to Lawal, 2013, and Olaju, 2019, education is very hard, confronted to be an instrument for self-reliance, reliance, self reconstruction, and economic development. Literacy, language, and education shares common boundaries, and they go well for seamless synonyms, as language is key to national development. This explains the reason the national policy in education emphasizes the roles of language in achieving the national educational goals as listed by Olubeko and Akimushiri 2013. In the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, which were set by the United Nations in 2000 to be achieved by the year 2015, the goals were eradicating extreme poverty and hunger, achieving universal mind education, promoting gender equality, empowering women, and uh, so on. But how many of these set goals, ladies and gentlemen, of the United Nations were achieved in Nigeria in the set time of about nine years ago needs no diver, no diviner compass to navigate. As vanguards of literacy, therefore, we are compared to examine the repurpose of literacy and how much of it we had actually got in the past. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I boldly affirm that the product of a literate society is the transformation of the community to a workable place with all stakeholders having their lots and with ease. For the purpose of clarity, a literate community is not an esoteric place with all indices of perfection that are expected of a paradise, but a sure refuge for all sorts of challenges and problems. The literate Nigeria of the yesterday years produced adherence of excellence in terms of self actualization for people who are not liabilities to the community, but anticipated societal assets for whom automatic jobs were waiting with appropriate comfort. Even grade two teachers, that is, graduates of teacher training colleges, and NC holders, graduates of colleges of education, let alone university graduates, had ready-made solutions to serious problems or genuine steps to solving difficult tasks. Students wanted them, community cherished them, the country did not only admire them, but used them. I cannot remember any of my teachers in the secondary modern commercial schools between 1973 and 1977. And those who taught me in the teacher training college between 1977 and 1980 sessions who were university graduates. I can't remember, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Perhaps few of them were NC holders. I underline the word perhaps intentionally to understand. Yet, they taught with the sagacity, parallel to bachelor degree holders. They had impeccable communication, content competence with performance and passionate delivery with pedagogy that posited wisdom, ethical principles, and proven prowess with pedigrees. Nobody talked about postgraduate certificates at that time. Of course, they existed. But what do you want to do with masters and PhD with scarcity of degree holders in the community? 
educated people constituted the cream of the society, and the much sought for people, yes, who mattered most when opinions, ideas, and contributions in cash and kind were required for developmental purposes. This was consequence of a systematic exposure to knowledge with measurable objectives and standard evaluation. In my generation, literacy made the average man happy and the rich man humble. Lest I should be shy bit overrating the world's success in the lives of the adherents of education in the first three decades of Nigerian independence, I capture below a profound narrative of the literacy drive of the earliest nationalist of Western Nigeria, beginning with the 1955 Declaration of Universal Foreign Education, UP, by Shifaba Fema Olowo. This report, tagged the golden era of Nigerian education, was first published in the inaugural lecturers, by the inaugural lecturer in Lagos Education Review, a journal of the University of Lagos in 2019, with the title, Literacy Intervention in Secondary Education, Experimenting with Community Participation in Upgrading Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination. The story is here, the golden era of Nigerian education. Nigeria attained our independence in 1960 with a lot of challenges, too many for a fragile nation like ours. How did it all start? In 1955, Professor Okoya, who was the majority leader of Western Region House of Common, which he forgot from our law at the end of affairs, saw the need for reviving a rather lane or filling a foundation for future modern Nigeria. It has been apparent. Primary education families. Professor Okoya declared, education is imperative and urgent. It must be treated with emergency second only to war. It must move with the momentum of a revolution. Fafu 1, 1974, Taiwo 1984. What followed this declaration was indeed revolutionary, as there was a massive construction of primary schools in the western region of Nigeria and the establishment of children colleges as well. Teachers were recruited in large numbers, majority of whom had gone through either the three, two, or one year intensive courses, basically in the teaching of pupils at primary school levels. It should be reported as well that education at this level was also free, free tuition, free food, free accommodation, and school uniforms, including stationery and selected books in course subjects. Teacher trainees were also paid a monthly salary in the last three months of, um, of their final year. And um, with the free universal primary education scheme, FUPE of 1976 brought a watershed to, to, to two decades of visible progress that followed she for Bafem Aulov's long short at educational revolution. The details are right there. Now, the equivalent of these figures that were paid to teachers then can be measured in today's I. Um, unimaginable high uh, money, I mean, in thousands, when you come to our, our own Naira today. 100 Naira that time should be about uh, maybe um, 10,000 now or 20,000. Now, what do we find that time? We find best practice in teacher training. We find effective classroom teaching. We find teacher commitment. We found uh, students' early competitions. We found robust students' scholarship, academic performance, and um, attitude change. We found fantastic expectorate and brain drains all that degree in 2019. Thus, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the highlights of literacy in Nigeria between 1970 and 1989 were phenomenal and could be summed up to include common entrance to keenly competitive post-primary institutions by candidates. Teachers trained adequately, professionally enough to demonstrate mastery of content and the application of corresponding pedagogy. Of significance is the quality of notes students received for nearly all subjects that required notes given. We had comparative students' performance in both curricular and co-curricular activities. We had book prices for best students in all subjects. We had scholarship or funding offers that came readily to students in post-secondary institution. Now, with all this, there is only one explanation, Mr. Vice Chancellor. And that is that it was the desire by the government of that time to build a literate society, to provide literacy opportunity to as many children as possible, irrespective of their psychosocial background. Investing in the literacy of a nation is the best thing that can happen to any nation and our entire citizenry. When things started falling apart. I stand here today to state that as far as education is concerned, Nigerian leadership seemed to have got it wrong 
from decades past, beginning from the 90s. I present here a few observations gleaned from both informal interactions among Nigerians and former reports from empirical records. Number one, less than four years ago, a young man born in 1992 was in Lagos with his dad one sunny afternoon, and they got talking. To make a point, in their crosses of dialogues, the man referred to the time when the president-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was the governor of Lagos State. His son has told him to ask, Dad, was Tinumbu FI governor of Lagos State? My comment about this is that the boy represented a generation of students who had suffered academic abuse for reason not theirs. They have been cheated of their right to acquire comprehensive education, for example, for no clear reason. History was removed from secondary school syllabus suddenly, and the intention of the power that be was left hanging. Though it has been restored, the sad story here is that decades of events, landmarks, and records that could constitute milestones in the shaping of our nation and the development of our children are left unaccounted for. Number two, quote and unquote, do you know that most students cannot write 14 fours in words? Four, 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 four. That is 44 billion, 444 million, 444,444 credited to a social media user. My comment here is that such inadequacy is an illustration of a disconnect between the cognitive capacity of a learner's comprehension and the application of such literacy to skills of numeracy. This is unfortunately reversing us to over four decades when the first national policy on education was on trial. One of the objectives of MPE, which came to us from the pre-independent struggle and reviewed in 1998, is inculcate permanent literacy and numeracy and ability to communicate effectively. Number four, number three, newly, acad newly created Ill illiterate Nigerians, quote and unquote. This expression was used of Nigerian primary school leavers in an empirical study by Okedara in 1997. In the tacit reference to this assertion, I in 2018 reported that the problem of illiterate learners continues through secondary and tertiary education as primary education is the foundation of any educational system and the key to success or failure of the old education system. My comment here comes as a question. Is this scenario better than it was 26 years ago? The answer is definitely no, that it is worse, if not agreeable. Scrapping of teachers' training colleges killed Nigeria's education. This is an expression of a stakeholder, a public figure, a former teacher, and a recipient of teacher's gratuitous certificate, who became a coach of Nigeria's national football team by name Shifadek Boye Onibinde, as reported by Tribune, on, Tribune Online on August 16, 2018. A major test of literacy, as variously mentioned in this presentation, is the ability to, of the college or university products to occupy the manpower opportunities of the country in all needed areas and to fit into the informal sectors as well. This has been pretty difficult in more than a, a decade without graduates going through graduate trainees programs of organizations. I present here below one of the most recent observations in the theater of English language usage, WIEC Chief Examiner's Report of 2020 for English Language Paper 2, tagged candidates' weaknesses. The weaknesses of SAP 2020, 2020, just a few years ago, just about three, four, three years ago. Number one, poor paragraphing. B, poor expression as a result of wrong concord, poor punctuation marks, wrong use of tenses, poor use of prepositions and articles, translations of vernacular into English, wrong amalgamation and syllabification, failure to grasp the requirements and demands of some questions attempted, inability to construct simple and correct sentences, inability to state the meaning of uh, quoted expressions, and wrong use of the first person pronoun, writing below required number of words, and so on. We have it there. From recent data from the State Ministry of Education, we have a clear picture of how bad education has gone in the country. Below is a four-year, or in the graph that will be shown to you, is a four-year 2017 to 2020 data of Ogu State Senior Secondary School. Please show the graph. Examination performance. Ogu State Ministry of Education has a robust record of each local government capturing students' action potential for higher education. 
The chart is the comparison of SSC results at both public and private schools. The graph is there. Can you show the graph, please? Now, the meaning, the interpretation of the graph that is shown, if it is shown here, the interpretation is that um, um, the chart reveals the education potential of both public, thank you, of both public, of both public and private schools in Ogun State between 2017 and 2020, the HEP higher education potential for the public represented by the blue bars indicates that the highest percentage of HEP for the public is 37%. The value is far below, below average. It shows that between 2017 and 2020, less than 40% of the students have access to higher institutions. This is quite below expectation. The story was driven with the private schools, which recorded a minimum of 63%. Well, the idea I want to bring out here, ladies and gentlemen, is that during our own time, there were few private secondary schools to which many of our parents could not afford to send us. Yet, many of us could still find our ways into their institutions. What can we say is the problem today? I go to the literature of teaching. There are three broad concepts as follows. There are three broad concepts of literature as follows. One, documented chronicle of a people, culture, subject, concept, or language in a given dispensation. That's um, the, first, the first. Number two um, is um, the creative works of fiction or non-fiction in the form of poem, drama, or prose. And number three is the vocation of a literary, literary art. In this inaugural report, all the three aspects are mentioned briefly, but I'm concentrating here on the first definition of literature, that is the history of teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, like most professions of vocations, teaching has a literature, it has history. How did teaching start? Who was the first teacher? And what was the mode of teaching in those days? Teaching is as old as the world. Every subject began with teaching. Educated men in the olden days intentionally took it upon themselves to be teachers. And um, we have, um, they were so esteem these teachers as they carry so much weight of recognition that their words were hallowed. In those days, when people like Aristotle spoke or wrote, lecturing or teaching was explaining what they had said. But when knowledge increased, people began to ask questions. Allow me to do it in 2021. Among the erudite men of that time was Confucius in 561 BC, who became the first ever private tutor recorded in history. Tefil 2016. Now I go to the teaching of literacy, teacher and teaching effectiveness. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. We now turn to the very important issue of teaching effectiveness with the English language teaching as a case study. We start with the question, who assesses the teacher? When is teaching effective? What does the language teacher contribute as the best to the best practice? Tracing the rules of failure in Nigerian schools is not a mirage, as some people may think. Yes, effective teaching, all of the 2014, is determined by holistic factors. Nigerian classrooms pose challenges to proper lesson delivery and a core, a core subject like English language should not be taught without recourse to the effect of an enabling environment, requisite facilities and proving methods. Monday born 2004, Abiyo 2010, identified large classrooms as a bane of success in secondary schools. Language according to, English language according to WAS 2011 Chief Examiner's report is the poor understanding of the comprehension passages. The twin problem of what is the author saying and what do the questions demand to count it all is the challenge of, the challenge of reading. In separate studies, Omojua 2005, Udosa and Uku 2005, Kola Ule and Olabiju 2015, observation was that if indeed reading is making meaning from text, poor readers who find reading boring will have the problem of comprehension. In the previous studies by Ogusonwe Tor, 1990, Uno 1990, Kola Ule 97 and 2003, failure in school subjects were traceable to inability of students to express their thoughts in English. The final question is still here, therefore is who and what build students' expressive capacity. As we reflect more on the question of who makes effective teaching happen, we cannot jettison the position of the teacher. Reporting on the language ability and com competence of the English teacher, Jibo Woto 2000, identified the pedagogical knowledge and practical skills as indicative of professionalism 
and must be demonstrated in a male. Must not be demonstrated in a male. So beg your pardon. The English language teacher occupies a unique position as the author of his or her class. The teacher should consider teaching a serious job that requires grave attention. And language teaching in particular demands a high level of com commitment and competence. All out of the day, 2005, 2007, 2016, 2019, 2020, worked on the issue of proper language construct and appropriate application of methodology and reported that effective teachers are more often than not evaluated by the language they teach and the language they use to make learning happen. Of necessity, it is assumed that they are skilled Communicator. In the words of Mesquite 2009, indeed, good use of language for instruction is essentially instruction in second and foreign language education. The inaugural lecture is strengthened by this position with testimonies of about 25 students on a social media platform who attributed their successes in life to their experience in an evening class of over 30 years leveraging on the communication capacity and the pedagogical approaches of their teacher. Significantly, the English language teacher was not on that social platform. Are the narratives of these successful men and women whose appointment of encomiums on the unseen teacher of decades was continuous. This unsolicited on, uh, on quantitative data from the capacity, captive audience from, from further established story the proven capacity of the teachers to make a difference in the learning process. From the social media, we have a lot of them in the booklet. The 21st century challenge, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Like any other area in the humanities and social sciences, language education is undergoing radical changes both in content and pedagogy. And as a result, the language classroom of today is dramatically different from what was in vogue in the mid and late 20th century, even 2010, or 2020. The shift in paradigm is identifiable in the 21st century language education which uses language and cultural knowledge as a window to communicate to others around the globe, rather than laying emphasis on memorization to rote learning of the old school. Traditional mode and methods of teaching are giving way to innovative approaches of knowledge delivery. Hence, flexibility is hereby demanded in classroom management in order to capture learners' proficiency level, interest area, and heterogeneous nature. There is no doubt that flexibility has always been there. For example, in our school days, it used to be state plays and film shows illustrating our literature texts, especially the popular Shakespearean selections like Macbeth, Othello, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Julius Caesar, and so on, and some other Nigerian literary materials like Achebe's Things Fall Apart are showing Castral or Brother Jero. However, we can push further in our flexibility by leveraging on the radical place of social media and advanced technology, deploying artificial intelligence to regulate service delivery in virtually all professions. If pursued with regular training, computer-mediated language instruction, promises, automation of learners' autonomy, and achievement of more radical academic gains without compromising best practice. One way to achieve this is um, by application of audiovisual learning device in the classroom. Uh, one of that uh, audiovisual learning will be played now. Can you, can you move fast? Uh, Phonics class for Nigerian puppies. Very fast. This is the phonics song. God is reading all day long.
next slide. Audio adult class, audio clip to teach listening conversation and feedback. Said? Yes, it says we have to investigate some aspect of the university facilities. Yeah, we have to design a questionnaire, don't we? Yes, and we have to write an essay and do a presentation. Is it an essay? I thought it was a report. Let me check. Yes, you're right, Kitty. It's a report. How long does it have to be? 1,000 words, isn't it? Let me see. The report has to be between 1,000 and 1,500 words, and we have to do that on our own. Thank but you. we do the presentation and... Thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, you pardon my having to bother you with these graphic details of the place of multimedia and literacy. We are face to face with a generation of students who are neither wishes or wizards, but choose to live in the cloud by their unbroken ties with social media. These are the learners who spend more time on social media than in real life interactions. We have to take study, research, and teaching to them. Researchers' findings reveal that students connect to formal and informal settings through social media, which also provide multiple dimensional opportunities for them to develop creative learning strategies. All of the in 2009, and a list of other researchers in 2012, and all of the 2020, explain that students exchange organized informal knowledge by educational purposes and also find people of same interest. I have some graphs here that reveal different experiences of students on social media and how much time they spend and the benefits and uh, most especially the consequence of um, spending time on social media get, getting nothing. Uh, show the next one, please. No, 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 before this one. Yeah, this one, you will see frequency of social speak in students' writing percentages. The chart above shows the frequency of Facebook usage as it affects social speaking students' writing. From the chart, 66.4 percent of the respondents who use it many times a day were more affected, followed by those who use it daily, 27.0 percent, and other 6.6 percent were least affected. Keeping the pace, it's obvious that technology has come to stay, Mr. Vice Chancellor. It can only improve, and it does improve daily, worldwide. To fail to key in now is to push forward the risk of producing graduates with myopic perception of their world. Students will consistently improve effectively in the English language by learning via the internet. Learning via the internet can be achieved by choosing levels of lessons and topics from chain of activities based on students' language proficiency, their skills, and their interest. However, language learning for language teachers on the internet can be about utilization of online resources and materials available to gain knowledge for productive teaching developments of learners. Electronic lessons normally allow students at any time to learn activities. I now move to conclusion and recommendation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, taking this long trip through literacy in Nigeria has made me more informed personally. My eyes are open to some major ills besieging the criminal system in Nigeria that make us look impossible as a nation in respect of matching with the level of technology at the international world. The bright side in the matter of technology, however, is that Nigeria is a force to be reckoned with in science and technology as young talents in sociolinguistics, forensic linguistics, computer engineering are speaking up. What is required is to formally bring technology into education and education into technology deliberately. I go to my recommendation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I will now conclude as follows. The task at hand is enormous. It is high time we rose to do justice to the decay in the education system because it is repairable. And the journey to rebuild the broken walls of literacy should begin in earnest. It's a trip started that promises hopes. I list some things here. A, to address the policy somersault of Nigerian education system, three things are recommended. One, that we bring back or fill out the stop gaps as we prepare teenagers for science university education. The stop gaps are the private institutions like teacher training colleges, trade centers, continuing education center. Luba was popular in those days, and the Oyewale brothers in Abeokuta, and they did great work for our generation. The curriculum of serving institutions must be replanned 
to give room for digital approaches to teaching and learning. Two, remove bad politics. Remove bad politics from funding of higher education. If government encourages university autonomy without funding universities, it is like divert, delivering a fine baby and abandoning it in the labor room at the hospital to perish. Number three, encourage modern studies without religious sentimentality. We are losing so innocent young youths to vagaries of antisocial habits and unwholesome practices. The Yahoo practices and courtism today are consequences of failed system. The world universities, Mr. Francis, we hear about today, like Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, and Yale, started as mission schools, and all of them is less than 800 years old. B, the English is a world language. That English is a world language, and a literacy hub is the main thrust of this lecture. Nigerian universities that share the vision of a best education, which focuses global opportunities for the country, may consider establishing centers of English pedagogies, where short courses of four to six months can be run. These are professional courses that take products directly to international opportunities, instead of going abroad to bath uh, dead people. And then, uh, 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 to continent. These are professional courses that take the products directly to international opportunities in choice continents around the world. Apart from boosting the internally generated revenues of the universities, such centers will also engage the youths and guarantee employment. This is the practice in the international world, and it is overdue in Nigeria. I'm sure OOU will take the lead in this initiative. Our Vice Chancellor loves what is good for the university. <laughs> Number three, there should be what I call participatory academia in our teaching from primary school up to the university level. What distinguishes Finland and a few other European countries, including the West, from us is the level of involvement of learners in the process of teaching. In those countries, teachers don't just stand in the front to teach. Both teachers and students plan what they were going to do and get involved in doing the same. The new curriculum for secondary education rolled out by the former executive secretary of NRDC, late Professor Obioma, with massive curriculum sensitization workshops for about five years. 2012 to 2016, and anchored by the retired director of the, by the dynamic director of the Western Zone, Dr. Moses Salau, chose to approach teaching learning processes from that angle by providing activities for both teachers and students. But how much of these recommendations are followed as stipulated in the curriculum is something to be investigated. Number four, as long as English language remains the official language of instruction in Nigeria, you may as well consider the training of professional English language instructors in the language abroad for some time in order to have access to interact with the native speakers that they may improve on their speaking and listening skills for better communication. It is part of the deficiency often observed that most Nigerian academic teachers of English language are often intimidated by their lack of proficiency in speaking, with the right accent or lack the ability to easily tune their ears to understand the right intonation when spoken to incorrect native accent, thus their capacity for proper communication is impeded in a way. Number five, government at all levels should go beyond paying lip service to education by introducing technology revolution in secondary and primary schools through provisions of alternatives to public power power supply, and provisions of technological tools for creative initiatives among both teachers and students. Number six, when the vision for restatement of literacy is matured, training of teachers is non-negotiable. Train and pay them handsomely for a better service and a better tomorrow. When you train people abroad, you pay them, and you don't owe their money. Pay them. My ultimate I now go to acknowledgments. My ultimate appreciation go to God Almighty, the Alpha, the Omega, my Lord, my King, and my Savior. I'm a beneficiary of God's marathon grace, mercy, and calling. 
To him alone, who is the immortal, the invisible, and the only wise, I offer my praise. I hereby sincerely appreciate our able and visionary vice chancellor, Professor Ayodeji Olaika Johnson Agola, who announced my professorship and the approval of this lecture thereof for his qualitative support. Thank you, sir. My constituency is the Christ kingdom, and I cannot but acknowledge the following spiritual fathers of mine Pastor Dere Sulu, who taught me discipleship, conducted my wedding, and has remained my spiritual counselor since 1989 when our, our past first crossed. I want Pastor Rosilu to stand up for recognition. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Pastor Samuel Adedipe, Pastor Johnson Idris, Pastor Lawrence Olaifa, and other notable pastors of Deeper Christian Life Ministry from within and outside the region, including all workers and members raising this occasion. Our pastor has represented all. Thank you for coming, sir, because of our time. Constraint of space and time will prevent me from atomizing your names one after the other. Please bear with me. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Charles Olufema Dekoya, the man at the end of our Thank you so much, sir. I also wish to express my appreciation to the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Latunde. Ola Tudu on any day, my dear sister and her husband, Mr. Lukman, I say kudos for being a part of today's glory. My appreciation is duly extended to other principal officers of the university, Mr. Olufemi Moju, Registrar, notable for his Queen's English, Mr. Semu Makinde Bossa, Egomi Egomi, and Dr. Adeba Mboduole, the only university librarian in Nigeria. I thank you all for being a part of this event. I appreciate the provost and the post the provost of postgraduate school, Professor Lucia Gulawal, with his deputy registrar, DR, my DR, his DR, my DR, Mrs. B. Bishodia, as well as all other provosts, their deputy registrars, secretaries of faculty officers, and all of all campuses of OU. I dedicate a thank you to the memory of Professor Yunus Aoyeneye, the Vice Chancellor, when I joined the service of the university, many thanks to Professor Saburi Adejima Adesoya. I don't know where that visit is around. A strategic leader with Magic One, who first shot me into prominence in February 2016. Professor Gani, you are allowed to be today, a man with resilient disposition and uncommon wit, who entrusted me with difficult offices and stood by for consultation. Professor Sherif Dean Teller, who handed over to me as the director of CISE. Professor Hideji, my first teacher there at Osu, as a staff. And Professor Stella Eliosho, a mother and counselor. Thank you, sirs and ma, for exposing me to leadership at the university level. You shall know no sorrow in your old age. This is just a representation of many names, because the DVC admin wanted it to be two pages. Now, all past deans, the sub-deans, the HOD of education, I especially acknowledge for providing a warm and sociable family where all things work. Of special mention is the current dean, Professor Lufemi Kale Songo, a fastidious personality that often insert workshop inside faculty board meetings. The FO, Mrs. Adeshola Adeniji, and the entire administrative staff across the faculty. Professor Kemi Adekola, my student from undergraduate to PhD. Dr. Ayodeji Fegbeson, Dr. Ede Suru Itaogu, Dr. Lufumila Yoyunade, Dr. Adeola Agusonya, Dr. Lubela Aforabira Moni, a mobile computer, Mrs. Kenya Dewo, Mrs. Abisola Adedoyin, Mr. David Ainde, Mrs. Solain Kasalisu, and Olawo Meadebambo, and the heads of other departments, Prof. Prof. Joshua Oni, Dr. Janet Adetayo, uh, my sister, Dr. Peyemi Shoaga, and Dr. Ayo Kundari, Prof. The chaplain, if you please pardon me, I don't know what, why it is not there. He's a director of institute, the chaplain. Please pardon me, sir, so it's not deliberate. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, you kindly permit me to give special recognition to the following people who will be represented by the former Dean of Arts, Professor Dipo Olubomeng, a friend more than a brother. They are Professor Tawedu, my in-law and longtime friend, Professor Lasu Baramoshi, the only educator in the Faculty of Education, Professor R.O.C. Shomoye, where did the money go? Professor Israel Ademiluyi, a complete gentleman. Professor Adejoke Dibo, my sister in London. 
Professor Biodo Guyami, the President of Chairman, Dr. Tayo Moni, Professor Yakini Ogutimai Egbomi, and late Professor Eliata Benedict. Professor Dipo Lubumai, you may please rise for recognition to represent them. Is he around? Oh, sorry, it's not around. Thank you, sir. While I take time to bless the memories of my late parents, I regret the absence of my mother today. Her name was Mrs. Susina Tutaiwo Oladujoi Yaleja, who left this world for the great beyond. Immediately, I finished my first degree in 1988. Thank God I was able to take care of him of her with some of my lesson proceedings as a student. This is, to, this is supposed to be a day. God dropped the mantle of our responsibilities on my elder brother, Mr. Saeed Yolushola Banjo Oladujoi, the Olori Ebi of Oladujoi's family whose role cannot be described in a few words. You may please rise for recognition as we represent the family. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. He said, Baba, you are around. Can you stand to represent the family? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate my in-laws, engineer and Mrs. Oke, Mrs. K. Miyakito Mide, and the entire Odushu's family. I like Engineer and Mrs. Oke to please be on their feet for recognition to represent the Odushu's. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I must acknowledge and appreciate the genuine efforts of my teachers, Professor Oyiloye, Mr. Agukoya, Mr. Shuewu, Evangelist Adeshegun, and Mr. Tao Shogbeso, including my PhD supervisor. Professor C.O. Kolawale, a dynamic scholar with dependable attributes. Professor Paulina Adesha Mowo, my first degree supervisor, who signed my project on 8888 and I scored 70. Professor Taiwa Jai, a shrewd leader and planner. If any of these names, if they are around, can you stand up for recognition of my teachers? Is any of you around? Oh, fantastic. That, that must be Mr. Chukbeson. Thank you, sir. God bless her. Oh, is it Evangelist Adesha Mowo, Mr. Chukbeson? Thank you, sir. God bless, sir. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Representative of my schoolmates from LTT Chagamu and Oske Jagu in Jebu, they are here. Can you please stand up for recognition? Representative of LTT Chagamu and Oske Jebu, wow. This is fantastic. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Professor Lavi Joyce, inaugural lecture planning subcommittee's chairman and members. Only God can thank you enough. Police Superintendent Walida Saulu for security. Mrs. Ola Eno Mosheka Jiboye, entertainment. Professor Muiwa Deyemi, Aristotle, strategy and logistics. Dr. Michael Sardineye, media and publicity. Prince Abayomi Obasan, finance and funding. And Pastor Isaac Adeshoye for prayer. If any of you can you stand up for recognition? Fantastic. Thank you very much. The presence of real fathers and mothers add value to the awesome gathering. Long live Kabi Salai Lua, Israel Highness, Oba Abdul Rasaka Adeshino, Adenuba, the Mwari of Agawe, General Sansa Adin Awusun, Adibaba Oba, and Prince Felicia Ashwewo, Ulodi Omoba, both of whom are foremost Agawe sons with unequal patriotic pedigrees. Professor Sa Otumba, Ulu Sholape Adefeso, Biadebajo, the former dean of us, OOU. Can you stand up to represent everybody, sir? You are welcome. Thank you, sir. And to other numerous high profile guests, he has seated leaders of thoughts, captains of industry, academics, administrators, colleagues from various universities, my undergraduate and postgraduate students, you are all appreciated. Some of them are not here now because the students, they are writing exams. Everything must go. Ah, great, so right. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Here is a small but mighty team of four boys. Ife, Igbagbo, Irituru, and Ibukumi joining me to appreciate all participants. It is their day, it is your day, sir, and it is our day. Children, you may please try for recognition. Please sit down. Finally, 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 Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Some 32 years ago, there was a young woman, <laughs> a teacher of mathematics, 
whose husband I am, a teacher of English language, could my darling wife, right for recognition? Thank you. I thank you for being a good friend, wife, mother, and supporter for this glorious vision. Among many others till date, I'm grateful, dearness. A retired principal that is not tired in the home front. I will continually appreciate you and love you over and over again. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I wish to draw the curtain at this point. I appreciate you all. Thank you for listening. began his teaching career in 1988 after graduating with a B.A. You may have your seats, ladies and gentlemen. English in the top 10 of his highly competitive set. Thank you. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, I want to sincerely thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for attending this 107th inaugural lecture. We wish you a safe journey back to your respective homes when you leave us this afternoon. Uh, the inaugural lecturer has indeed uh, recognized most of the people I would have uh, mentioned here. So once again, I want to thank you all for coming. You are all recognized and you are all very important to us. We appreciate your being with us here. Uh, but before we leave, I must mention that we have in our means the Vice Chancellor of the Taishulari University of Education, Professor Oluwale Banjo. You're most welcome, sir. Please also permit me to specially mention uh, a former dean of the Faculty of Education and a revered uh, gentleman who retired from this university some time ago, Professor Taiwa Jai. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Also, we have in our midst uh, a foremost traditional chief in Agovoye yeah? here, also a former dean of arts and a respected member of the Agovoye community, Professor Sa Otumba Shola Debajo. We welcome you once again. Thank you very much. I'm also told that there's somebody here that uh, the inaugural lecture will want us to mention, Professor Bulugbe, if you're here, we welcome you most heartily. Thank you very much uh, for coming. Shortly, I'm going to invite the Vice Chancellor to declare this ceremony closed. May I implore you, ladies and gentlemen, that while the procession is exiting, that you please stand and remain standing till the procession exits the hall. Thank you very much. We thank you for coming. God be with you all. May I now invite the Vice Chancellor to please declare this 107th inaugural lecture closed. Once again, the principal officer of the university and members of great senate, distinguished others, the inaugural lecture of today has been very handsome. Lord, and I know we have enjoyed ourselves. So we can even tag the inaugural lecture of today as confession time, because it's confessing to us all the deeds that both the DBs had been and, and uh, himself has done in the, in the backyard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Senate, I wish to declare the 107 inaugural lecture closed. Sciences Education Department. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may please rise and remain standing while the procession exits. May I also inform you that this inaugural lecturer is having a reception at the Goodwill, uh, at the Goodwill Center uh, in the town here. He expects you to please join him at the reception at the Goodwill Center in Agoway. Thank you very much, and God bless you.
created a niche. Please, the members of the family should equally join the procession immediately after the last person. Join the join them right away, please. Thank you. Admission, admission, admission. Thank you very this much. is to inform the general public that application into the OOU Open and Decent Learning Program for the 2022-2023 academic session is currently ongoing for BSc Accounting on a four-year program. Candidates are required to have five OLM credit classes in GCE, SSCE, NECO, or NACTE. Thank you. See you, Johnny Matthews, back to your very English language, mathematics, and three other subjects from Geography, Commerce, Government, Principle of Accounts, and Bookkeeping. The program is insulated from strife, flexible, and accessible to all learners. For further inquiries, visit our website www.odlc.ooyagoyway.edu.ng or contact us on 0906-6720769 or call 0806-625-5277. OOU Open Listeners Learning Program. Easy to find.